Skepticism abounds that it is possible for a person to truly change once they have become hardened and confirmed in their life's choices and values. Surely, some suggest, a real mid-course correction is not really feasible. Echoing the skepticism of the prominent Jewish leader Nicodemus as recorded in the New Testament, we are tempted to ask, can a person be born a second time? But the evidence keeps mounting that genuine and lasting change actually can occur even in people who are far down life's road. Today we will be remembering the story of the 20th century British communist named Malcolm Muggeridge. But first, may I ask for your help? If you enjoy this video, please hit the like button and feel free to subscribe to the Life Academy channel. This will help more people find us on YouTube and see or hear inspiring stories like this one. And of course, you can share it directly with your friends as well. And now to Malcolm Muggeridge. He was born into a British family who had become dedicated socialists. His father was a member of parliament and committed to the radical reform of society. The son Malcolm breathed in the air of Karl Marx's teachings unquestioningly. He graduated at top of his class from Cambridge University in the 1920s, and upon graduation did a stint for a few years teaching at an English school in India. Returning to his homeland, he became a journalist with a major metropolitan newspaper in England, the Manchester Guardian. He was sent out as a foreign correspondent, first to the Middle East on a short assignment, and then faithfully to the Soviet Union in the early 1930s. When he was first dispatched to Moscow, he expected to find the worker's paradise of his father's dreams. But while he was there, he began to see all the sordid sides of Stalin's reign of terror and started to re-examine his naive and idealistic communism. His dispatches telling the truth about life in Russia caused many of the British progressives to turn viciously on him rather than listening to the facts, and he came home disillusioned and confused. When World War II broke out, he was recruited to serve in Britain's military intelligence during the war. The chaos of the conflict drove him to despair, and at one point during that time, he seriously contemplated suicide, but something held him back. After the war, Muggeridge returned to journalism and eventually became the editor of a prominent news and opinion magazine called Punch. He ultimately wrote 22 books that were widely read in Britain, and he became a major media personality on the BBC, sort of a Charles Krauthammer type, offering learned and witty opinions on current events. In the 1960s, he publicly announced that he had given up on communism, socialism, and all other utopian fantasies, and had become a Christian. He wrote in explaining his shocking change, power is what Lenin sought and obtained to create his dictatorship of the proletariat in Russia. By contrast, Jesus proclaims his kingdom as the antithesis of power, as a kingdom of love. Pilate and Herod and the Sanhedrin all operated in terms of power, so on an enormously greater scale did Caesar, but Jesus himself disdained power and scorned it. Nevertheless, it is he, not the others, who is remembered, whose birth, ministry, death, and resurrection have provided the greatest artists, writers, composers, and architects with their themes and their inspiration. Without power, he, Christ, was almighty, with power, the others, like fireflies, shone a while and then disappeared. Muggeridge spent time in India with Mother Teresa in the 1970s and did a major documentary film on her that introduced her work to the world. In his early 80s, he was baptized and joined a church with his wife and then wrote his final book, his spiritual autobiography, entitled conversion. In it, he challenged the Western world to wake up to its fascination with abandoning Christian virtues for man-made ones. 
The process of death wishing, he wrote, in the guise of liberalism has been eroding the civilization of the West. The liberal mind is attempting to systematically, stage by stage, dismantle our way of life, dethroning its God and undermining all its certainties. And this in the name of the health, wealth, and happiness of all mankind. Who can measure the consequences of this naive assumption? In his final chapter, Muggeridge embraced his death and what lies beyond it, ridiculing the obsessive fear of death among secular people. He quoted Bonhoeffer's final words to his executioner, to you this is an end, for me it is a beginning. The last words of the book quote Michelangelo's final words on his deathbed. I have loved my friends and family. I have loved God and all his creation. I have loved life. And now I love death as its natural culmination. And so Malcolm Muggeridge died a believer. His story confirms again the biblical parable. He took a wandering prodigal-like journey home to his heavenly father. Proof once again, it's never too late. Music